Let's take a look at the second problem. Briefly explain why proving this if-then implies an if and only if relationship. So what's the if-then we, we proved? Da, da, da. If the set S of events is an optimal solution to the original instance, S with its start and finish time scaled by C is also an optimal solution to the new instance. So, you know, just, just to sketch it, I'm going to abuse some notation here. I'm, I'm saying, like, if S is a solution, then this is, I, I'm going to, I'm just going to write a note here. Heavily abused in notation. Abused notation. Okay. Da, da. But the point is, I've, I've shown that if I've got a solution set for the original problem, then that solution set scaled by C, so projected into the new instance, is going to be a solution to the new instance. Uh, why is it that I have also shown that CS, arrow S, you know, we could actually, to get from here to here, so imagine Let's, let's say that S prime is C times S, right? Um, then uh, S prime, what we're saying is S prime arrow S, but, but S is really S prime divided by C, so, so it's this, right? Uh, but 1 over C, that's just another constant. Uh, so we can, we can actually change this to like D, where D is equal to 1 over C. Oh! Uh, and that's why we don't want to assume that c is a positive integer. We'd like it to be a real number. Uh, that's that's awkward. So assume we we're not going to assume c is a positive integer, but we are going to assume that uh, c. So for for any time we might be interested in, uh, assume c is such that uh, for all times ti, c times ti is an integer. So that's really the assumption that we're making. Um, c is not an integer, but it is set up so that we will get a new instance of the problem. So it did say the new instance is also an instance of the new Olympic scheduling problem. So we're going to have to assume that we do this multiplication in such a way that it's safe. Okay, so back down here, that lets us have d be 1 over c, which is important because if c was an integer, 1 over c, for most integers, is not an integer. Uh, but if we don't restrict c and d to be integers, c can still be an integer, d can be a real number. It's still positive. If c is positive, then 1 over c is positive. And all we're doing is we're multiplying by d instead. So this is scratch work on the right here. Let me just label it because I did all this horrible nota notation abuse, so all that scratch work. Here's my solution. Because we can use the if-then with a new c equal to 1 over c to prove the reverse direction. So that's a short sketch of my proof. Might be nice to have a little bit more on this one, but that is a brief justification, and certainly it's backed up by my scratch work.